Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will cover a few of the key components of Data Lakehouse. We have covered the Data Lakehouse setup in the previous video. Link is in the description below. We will go over Apache Iceberg and see how it works with actual examples. In addition, we will go over Nessie's catalog and cover branching and merging. If you work with Git, then you will feel at home with Nessie. It is inspired by Git. So what is Apache Iceberg? Apache Iceberg is an open table format designed for large tables. The purpose of a table format is to determine how you manage, organize, and track all of the files that make up a table. Consider it an abstraction layer between our physical data files, in our case, a CSV file in a min.io, or it can be a parquet or a JSON file and how they are structured to form a table. As we saw an example of sales data CSV file in the previous session. We configure the file to the Apache Iceberg format. There are various layers below a table, but we mainly interact with a table. And as we have covered, the Iceberg brings the following functionality to the world of Data Lake. Schema evolution. This allows table design to change without the loss of data. In other words, we can add, drop, update, or rename columns and tables. Transactional consistency. Write operations are atomic, and the system maintains a consistent state even in the face of failures. Time travel. Time travel is the ability to specify a date in the past as part of the query, and we get a view of the table as it appeared on that date. Time travel enables reproducible queries on tables that are constantly updated. Version rollback allows a data architect to roll back a table to a previous state if a new design is bad or data is corrupt. Let's go through Apache Iceberg's architecture to understand how Iceberg brings these feature to a data lake catalog. The processing engine connects to the data catalog in our example, it is Dremio, and it is connecting to Nessie to get the list of tables. For each table, the catalog keeps the track of the current metadata file. Let's take a look at the warehouse bucket where Iceberg stores various metadata files. If you look at a sample table, it has a metadata folder, and in this folder, we have a JSON metadata file. Next, we have the manifest file in an Avro format. And this is followed by the manifest list file, also in Avro format. In another folder, named as a GUID, we have the actual data file in Parquet format. These files together make up an Apache Iceberg table. The metadata file contains schema and partition information. This could also include previous schemas and partitions if these were changed. The metadata file also contains a list of snapshots. Every time a table is changed in any way, a new metadata file is created based on the previous metadata file. The changes are placed in a snapshot and a new snapshot is added with a new metadata file. Metadata files allows a table to be versioned and rolled back if necessary. They also contain the metadata needed for schema evolution, partition layout, and hidden partitioning. This file contains a pointer to the manifest list file. And the manifest list file contains an entry for each manifest file associated with a snapshot. Each entry includes a path to the manifest file and some metadata about the file. This can include partition stats and data file counts. These stats can be used to avoid reading manifest that aren't required for an operation. The manifest file contains a list of path related to data files. Each entry for a data file includes some metadata about the file, such as each column's upper and lower bounds, which can be used to prune files during query planning. And last but not least, we have the data file. So these are the physical data files written in formats like Parquet, ORC, Avro, etc. This file contains the data 
and in our example is the sales data we imported in the last session. This is the makeup of Apache Iceberg table format. These operations are performed in the backend while we only see a table in the execution engine, Dremio. Iceberg is invisible when used in the data stack. The philosophy comes from the SQL table where we never think of what is underneath the SQL table, we only interact with the table. Following are the benefits of using the table format. Using the snapshot pattern means that Iceberg can guarantee isolated reads and writes. The reader will see a consistent version of the data, so there are no dirty reads, and that too without the need to lock the table. Writers work in isolation, not affecting the live table and will perform a metadata swap when the write is complete, making the change in one atomic commit. Use of the snapshot also enables time travel operations as users can perform various operations on different versions of the table by specifying the snapshot to use. Nessie is a set of libraries that enable us to maintain multiple versions of our data and leverage Git-like branches and tags for our data lake house. Nessie enhances the iceberg table format with version control. Nessie is inspired by Git. We need to replace all Git references of files and directories with tables in Nessie. The primary concepts of Nessies are, number one is commit. This will give us a consistent snapshot of all tables at a particular point in time. Number two, branch. This is a pointer to a snapshot that user can add commits to. Number three, tag, a reference that points to a particular commit. Number four, hash. This is a hexadecimal string that represents a particular commit. Nessie starts with a single branch called main. That points to the beginning of time. A user can immediately start adding tables to that branch but we would create a separate branch to add any features or enhancement to our data lake house. Let's cover this with an example. We create a dev branch in Nessie if it does not exist. Before adding any work, just like Git, we need to switch to this new branch. Otherwise, we'll be adding to the main branch. You want to make sure all the new development happens in a separate branch, so our main branch remains consistent and our end user do not see any work that is experimental or under development. Under this branch, we will create a table that is sourced from a Parquet file. I'll copy a Parquet file into min.io bucket. The file is available on GitHub. In the previous session, we used a copy command to load the data into a table. Copy command currently does not support Parquet file, so we will create a view. Let's format the file to make sure the data looks good. We select the file and save it as a view. We provide a name for the view and select Nessie's catalog. Make sure your branch is set to dev and click save. We should see this view under the development branch. If we switch to main, then we won't see this view. I hope this makes it clear. When I said we want to keep all development work, or experimental work under a different branch. So our end user won't see anything that is outside the main branch. Therefore, they will only see approved and production ready code. Anyways, let's switch back to dev branch and create a table from the view. We use create as statement, then select from the view. Do some format conversion, and let's go ahead and execute this statement. This creates a new table. By doing so, we have created a table using a Parquet file. Let's say we have tested this new table and we want to make it available to our end users. We simply run a merge command to push our changes in the development branch to main. Now let's switch over to our main branch to see the view and the new table. And once we are switched over, we do see both of these objects here. We have completed our work. Now we can delete the dev branch with the following command. Let's say there's a mistake in the development work that we have just merged. That was done under the dev branch. We can roll back 
the main branch to an earlier commit and remove all the changes that were part of the dev branch. You can also create feature branches. So any new feature and enhancement that you're doing, you perform those under the feature branch and you commit those feature branches to either dev branch or directly commit them to main. I hope this gave you an understanding of Apache Iceberg and Nessie's catalog. This is all on Data Lakehouse for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.